Travel. This is Ariana Cap, and this is my series on bass playing technique. In this series, I want to share with you my take on what I believe good technique constitutes, why that is so, and bunches of exercises that will help you in your endeavor. Technical exercises that help with agility, consistency, coordination, timing, evenness, and a good round tone. That is the goal. Now, I'm a big fan of practicing things in a systematic fashion, and I'm also a big fan of practicing things in a creative way, so I don't have the feeling I'm like practicing a concept that's disconnected from the music, whether it's music theory or whether it's technique. I want to stay close to the musical application. I want to have my creativity cranked up to keep the exercises fresh and applicable. So I'm going to have hopefully useful ideas for you in that regard. Each episode will contain an exercise, an application of this exercise in some sort of creative context, and it will create uh, and it will contain a tip. So let's get started. The first exercise I want to show you is the permutation exercise. It's an oldie but goodie. It's also known as the one, two, three, four exercise. There are lots of variations of this exercise. So whether you're a beginner or an advanced player, you can find ways of making this exercise very, very useful and difficult. Push the tempo. Um, and there are lots of variations that we're going to talk about as we get going. Today's version is the basic version. Think of it this way. You have four fingers. So this is a left hand exercise, but also coordination with the right hand as it always involves more than just one thing. So one, two, three, four are the four numbers of your left hand fingerings. And you can shuffle those numbers up in 24 different ways without repeating any number. That gives you 24 options. There are six that start with one, six that start with two, six that start with three, and six that start with four. And the column that starts with number one is a good one to start out with if this is new to you. I recommend you always use a metronome. It'll keep you honest, it'll keep you on track, and it will make it so that you practice thinking ahead. So I'm going to set my, my tempo to tempo 80, and I'm just going to play them as quarter notes. With one, two, three, four, this is the basic setup, right? Now, as you're doing this, even if it's being a very basic exercise, you can really listen to your tone. Make sure you're entirely on the click, that it sounds connected. This is, for example, something that may happen to you. That when the left hand and the right hand aren't coordinated, we get a little bit of a... You know? And you want to listen for that. Make make it, you know, give it its maximum use. Now, when this gets easy to, for you, without touching the metronome, you can just double it up. Or quadruple it. All right, so that's the basic variation. Now, you can do this with all the numbers that start with one. And then you can progress to the more difficult ones. My idea is always I start with... Um, with the, 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 the first finger being on the lowest fret and then I go all the way up to the double dots and once I've reached the first finger go into the double dots I turn around. For some folks who it might be really hard to put one finger per fret in the lower registers, don't fret it. Just go up a little bit and start for example on the fifth fret. If your bass allows you can go all the way up until your first finger, your starting finger, hits the, the 17th fret which is the octave. If your bass doesn't have as many frets don't worry about it. Just go as far as you can. And in time, you'll work your way down. And as we go along, I will have lots of tips for your left hand to help you um, with, um, with playing with one finger per fret. I'm just going to give you one more example of one of the combinations. Let's say starting with number three, I'm going to go with three, four, one, two, one. <laughs> That's a good, a good warm up, and don't have to do a ton of it. You know, a couple minutes every day, one round of one set of numbers. That's a good, that's a good goal to have. Now, I mentioned earlier that I like to you put things into a creative context, and one of my favorite practicing tools is a delay pedal. I'm using the flashback of to see, but any delay pedal that has a dotted eighth note will give you a great practicing tool. I'll tell you why. Because everything 
that you play with that pedal is going to sound good. Now I'm going to tell you briefly what my settings are. I'm setting it to a dotted eighth note and I have the feedback put to zero so I got only one repeat. Here is a note just with the pedal. So it comes back at me. It also is set so that the dynamic of the returning note has the same flavor and has the same, I think I have it on tape right now, and it has the, roughly the same dynamic. So it's not much louder or much softer. Because if you do that, here's what happens. I play a note and then I get the, the delay a dotted uh, eighth note later. Now if I get into a rhythm and I space it right, then what I get is I play the note, then here's the delay, but then I play the next note and then there's the there's the delay of the next note. So I'm going to move over and it's going to sound like, uh, like continuous sixteenth notes. So I'm going to play the exercise uh, with three, four, two, one, for example, uh, using that technique. So, so check it out what this sounds like. <laughs> it sounds better if you make the notes short because if I make them too long or play too legato you get a little bit of a run in between the notes so I like to play them short and I feel like making music right now kind of exercises with all sorts of different theoretical concepts and technical concepts. And I think they're super fun. So there's an idea for you. Use the delay pedal and make it creative. Here's another way of making this exercise creative. You can package the one, two, three, four idea into a groove like this. and four and so on three and four and of my first bar I am putting in any kind of variation of one two three four so here are a couple of variations now I just did one two three four but there are lots of options of course different variations of the one, two, three, four idea and there's a cre creative application right there for you. If you want to also take it another step further, observe what your right hand does. I'll have exercises for that as we go along, but observe if your right hand is doing some sort of parallel motion mimicking your left, whatever pattern you've got going on there, or whether it's truly independent, which is what I recommend. You always have I am, I am, I am alternating, so you don't even have to think about it. I don't mind what, which finger you start with, we all have our favorite fingers, but keep it alternating. Then you don't have to think about it. You don't have to make a decision which finger am I going to use. And it's independent of what your left hand does. Today's tip. I recommend that when you play seated, you do not rest your elbow on your knee or upper thigh. It is a habit that we sometimes get into. I see sometimes folks, you do that when they don't have a strap. When you don't have a strap, you really rob yourself of a vital part of interaction with your bass. To me, there's a very close connection with my um, body through the strap. We'll talk more about that as we go. But I really recommend play with the strap on. And I recommend against playing leaned over. It puts a lot of strain on your lower back. And it creates a very unnatural playing angle. It will feel very different when you then stand on the bandstand and play your bass because you're used to this sort of setup. In the next episode, I will have a few variations of the permutation exercise going for you that involves different strings. And I will also have some tips for you if you have a hard time 
staying with the one finger per fret position, especially in the lower registers. I want to just mention briefly, I just released a book. It's called Music Theory for the Bass Player. It has an extensive section on technique, about 20 pages strong with lots of exercises and photos. So feel free to check it out on Amazon. I love hearing from you. So let me know how these exercises are working for you. Let me know if you have any questions. If you'd like me to tackle a certain topic, I'll be happy to, to look into it. And stay out of travel. Thank you for no travel for having me. And thank you for watching.